Welcome to A&M Reviews. I'm Sky Bear, and I'm here with my buddy Sal. What's up, Sal? Not much. And before we get into it, keep in mind there will be spoilers up ahead, so watch out for that. You've been warned. And today we will be reviewing A Wrinkle in Time, Disney's latest adaptation. Uh, keep in mind, I did not read the book, but Sal, you read the book, right? Yes, I did. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I just saw the movie. That's fine. Um, I'll give it my view comparing it to the movie, and then since you didn't read the book, you can give your... Uh, your review of just watching the movie without knowing anything about the book so that that works out so why don't we start with the book first like what did you, what did you think about the book Sal? uh the book okay it's it's not like a harry potter you know it's um uh, it's okay i would think it's uh like a junior version of harry potter kind of thing it's getting you into the realm of science and magic or you know fantasy kind of thing i gave it a seven out of ten for just the book itself okay. So, um, so like a pretty decent read. Yeah, if you're a teen, if you're a kid, like middle school kid or something, you you know pick up the book. It's a it's an easy read. So um, I mm-hmm. would say yeah, go go ahead. Um, it'll get you up to part two, reading higher intermediate step. I would say. Gotcha. Some things in the book um, compared to the movie, like uh, there's differences between stuff in the book that's not in the movie and stuff in the movie that's not in the book. But we'll get into that later. Um, just the book itself. It's it's the first part to so uh, like a book series, right? Yes, there's I think it's I want to say like around five books in the series. I only read the first one, but it did leave off with the cliffhanger. So, you know, there's something else ahead. The story, the whole story was a fairly easy kind of like you know start middle and end there was one problem they solved it fairly fast um no complex story behind it um just like the father got lost kid tried to go rescue the dad you know ended up fighting a let's say a monster beat the monster fairly easy then they're back and everybody's happy so with that said let's talk about the movie Skybird, All right. you didn't read the book. Give us uh, your take on the movie. All right, just from the movie perspective, dear God, this movie sucked, dude. <laughs> I have to agree. I have to agree. If you say oh, it sucks man, without reading the just, book. Like, right off the bat, everything about this movie just screams, like, this is not a good movie. Like, like I don't know. Just like, okay, like, first off, the child actors. We got to talk about the child actors. Yes. Given, we all know... Child actors do the best job that they can do. Because, I mean, they're kids. What else can you ask of them? Correct. However, child actors are not good actors for a good reason. <laughs> that's because child actors are usually not good actors, Sal. And that's what happens. The only one that I, can, <laughs> I would give it up to was probably Meg. Um, just her weird acting was... It looked like it came from the book. The character Meg from the yeah. book also seems like the character Meg from the movie... Um, I heard a lot of people were complaining because, you know, the family is mixed and stuff, interracial. But I was, when I read the book, it didn't give me the aspect that the people that were describing the book were just white. And a lot of people were talking about it. And I think their idea comes from the first movie. This is the second remake of the book. So they were judging mm. it from the first movie. I didn't see the first movie. I didn't see it. It didn't really bug me. Meg's character was, was fine. Um, I mean... I didn't have to pick anything about her actual character, her acting, but God, the other two characters, Calvin and Charles Wallace, they were they were just bad. Like with Calvin, like I don't know what it, what it was with that dude, but uh, he's his acting was just like so flat the whole time. I mean, that's that's the only way I can describe it really. And then what I I think the kid who played Charles Wallace did the best that he could do given the circumstances and given how old he is, honestly. Like, like that was a lot to ask for that little kid, you know? Yeah, I mean, for, for Calvin, I share the same, you know, your points. In the book, he played more of an important role. But given mm-hmm. that in the book, he still did, was not that fairly important. He was kind of love, the love interest for Meg. Right. You know, uh, or her discovery about love kind of thing, if you want to say it that way. They do share a kiss in the book. Didn't happen in the movie. Um, the actor for Charles Wallace. At the beginning, he was playing a fairly decent role. But as a story I progressed... I thought he was doing the role great, honestly, like in the beginning. I was like, okay, I can see why they went with this kid. This kid exactly. seems to be Charles Wallace. But then later on, it's just like, oh, no. <laughs> After that, I believe that he thought he was doing the best acting that he could. But like you said, he's a kid. Well, what do you expect? If I was directing the movie, I would have been like, you know, you know, let's go back and 
try to do it again and kind of keep them on pace. You have to understand they're child actors. So you want to basically tell them, hey, let's do it again, but with more oomph or more this or more that. Direct them, you know. Don't just be like, oh, they're kids and just let it go. Because it's going to reflect on you because you're the director. So, um, yeah, I mean, he did his <laughs> his acting went from, you know, I would say an A to down to like a two <laughs> at, by the end of the movie. Jumping over to Chris Pine. Yes. Uh, I know we're going to be jumping around a little bit, but but this is just off the top of my head. So, so he was trapped in an orange box. And then he leaves with Meg by going down, you know, the invisible staircase or whatever, right? Yes. Are you telling me that all he had to do was just climb down some invisible stairs and that's it? Well, in the movie, it, it appears that way. But in the book, they went a different route. Okay, because it's like, it just looked like he could have left at any point in time. <laughs> It's like, you've just been squatting there for four years, just in this orange box? Really, bro? I mean, I would have just jumped down, shit. I mean, don't they fall down from that height and they're, they're like, totally fine? I would just jump down. Fuck yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, in, in the movie, it appears that it's just that easy, but they don't explain it. But in the book, they do. It's, they have to see it through the glasses. Or the, it's, it's like, um, they actually talk about the science saying, like, everything in the universe is made of molecules. You know, and Adam's... Wait, wait. Well, yeah, like, she looks at the glasses in order to see the staircase. But then she she just takes them off and then, like, memorize the whole thing, right? Yeah, well, that, that's how apparently that's the I'm Disney... Saying, like, <laughs> that's the Disney like, route. did they need the glasses to leave the orange box again? Or or what? In the book, they did. Uh, they had oh, okay, to use it okay. back and forth kind of thing. Um, in the book, it, it talks about the science behind everything. Everything is made of atoms. You know, and right. every atom, you know, there's molecules and and everything inside of it, there's space. So you can actually rearrange it and anything, it's basically emptiness. That's what they talk about. Everything in the world is space, mostly space, empty space. And if you're, if you know that, you can go through anything that looks solid because you know the science behind it. So it's basically saying like, if you understand science, you know that anything tangible you'll is be not, cool <laughs> yeah anything tangible is not really tangible it's purely space and i guess right. the glasses make you understand that and you can manipulate material stuff and part it away kind of thing or make something invisible solid kind of thing mm. which is given that i mean like the book kind of did a little better job in explaining it than the movie the movie taking it that it's disney and they wanted to kids to go see it they're like oh just give them a magical glasses and they're, they're, they're fine they wanted to uh, make it easier for kids to understand but at the same time if you're basing it off a book that's made for kids and the book did okay having kids read it and understand it don't think your audience are going to be stupid and say hey we don't understand what you're talking about kids are smarter than that you know uh -huh. if not then why do you why did you even put that the mom and dad were scientists you know just Forget everything about science and just go with magic instead, you know? Yeah. Okay. And also, I want to talk about the CGI, Sal. Oh. What What did you think about the wonderful visuals oh, of God. A Wrinkle in Time? Oh, God. Uh, let's, uh, my biggest... Were you as enthralled as I was, Sal? I, I was really, like, shocked about how they went and created uh, the character for Oprah Winfrey. That was not even... Honestly, I was laughing the entire time Oprah showed up. It looked like it was something straight to video, to VHS, back when it was straight to VHS, you know? Dude, that <laughs> shit was so funny. Oh my god. Just, just I just loved how her character introduction was made. Just like, all this light just forming just this person. And you're like, who is this giant godlike being? And then, oh, what do you know? It's fucking Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> and this is a, that's and the other this, thing. I mean, and this big booming voice is like, it's like, you're the wrong size. It's like, how can you be the wrong size? It's like, Jesus, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> well, in the book, actually, uh, her character speaks like with an echo. Yeah. So I think the movie's version was that she's going to have a big old voice or something. She needed a big booming voice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it was... Although, still, that was, like, that was, that was one of the best things I've seen in a while. Just, like, just like the almighty, powerful Oprah. I would have liked it if her character in the movie would would have kept the echo from the book. Or at least that's how I, I read it from the book. That she had, like, a 
echo for me it was kind of iffy because they didn't really explain the three witches miss who miss mm. what's it and miss witch in the book they did they kind of explained it a little more but in the in the movie it was like they're just there and they just come up to them and just like oh look it's her and her quickly like let's get this movie on the road kind of thing we only have this many you know allocated minutes um i would have liked it if they would have explained each character a little more um both the book and the movie did not do a good well a uh, job of introducing them. The book did a little more than the movie, but still, it still lacked on it. Uh, I mean, those visuals sucked. The script wasn't that great. The acting, we know. Um... And there's stuff that's missing from the book. You know, I mean, yeah. the biggest I thing. Know. I think I think that was about it. Other than you know, yeah. I think that was it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just let me go down my list really quick. I mean, differences that I noticed was, first of all, there's no twins, Sandy and Dennis. Uh, the other thing, the happy medium, the book version versus the movie version, the book version, mm -hmm. she's a female and she's really old. And she's always like, she's so old that she falls asleep. In the movie, it's a guy. I get it. Disney. Other than that, uh... When they go to the planet uh, where the darkness is or where it is, the layout in the book makes you feel mm -hmm. like it's a it's almost like, you know, the beginning when they go up to the uh, to the houses and they're all the same and everything. So it gives you this creepy feeling about like, oh, my God, everybody's robotic and stuff like that. That's the thing, how yeah. they describe it in the book. But they go further as they go into the city. They go into build building that are offices and you have these workers coming in and out like robots just doing their daily work like think of it like the matrix you know how everybody's doing their thing but you know it's a program it's physically that they're doing their task over and over and over and if somebody falls out of line that's when they get punished or something in the right. movie it's this world that reminds me of inception everything is changing constantly and i was like wait this is not what i read in the book so that kind of bugged me. And at the same time, the guy the red, the guy in the red, or the guy with the red eyes, his character in the book is more of a business suit guy who sits down at a mm -hmm. table and talks to the kids. And he's kind of, when you think about it, it's like the book is telling you like everything in the world. If you're caught in a dead job, you, you do constantly over and over, you become a zombie kind of thing. And I'm like, wait, how did this go from in an office to the beach in the movie i'm like it doesn't really make sense and it does the beach uh, was free sal they had to rent the office space the thing is that it it really didn't do it for me the beach scene why it comes out of nowhere yeah. so um that was one of the other things at the end when the father when they save the father um and he teleports himself and calvin off the planet in the book he actually teleports calvin himself and meg and leaves Charles Wallace behind. And they end up on the planet. Close by I would I would say. And there's creatures there. It tries to describe the creatures. Like a really long. Human like creatures. But with limbs like tentacles. And they call one of them. It's called On Beast. That's not in the movie. So I think what they did was. Um, in the book. It was the pre fight to the final fight and then they escaped and now they're going to regroup and they're going to get better and then they're going to go off and fight it again and that's what was missing in the movie in the movie it was like just go in and fight it you know dad and calvin leave makes there by it's by herself she fights it she wins everything's happy now she has the power to teleport anywhere she wants because she's the hero and I was like, wait, no, there's more characters to this. There's more of, uh, of a build-up, if you want to think about it that way. That was missing there. And I was like, okay, I would have liked the build-up. She developed a lot in that chapter alone. Like, she was really mad at her dad because she left Charles Wallace behind. Right. She had accepted. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> yes, but in the, in the movie, it's like, oh... They teleported. Okay, I hate him because he left. And, you know, I'm not, I am not. don't want to go. I want to stay with Charles Wallace. She stayed and then she's a hero because she saved him. She did the same thing in the book, but she teleported off the planet, held a grudge against her dad. At the end, then she says, oh, wait, guess what? Dad really loves me and Charles Wallace. And it hurts him to do that, to leave Charles Wallace behind. 
Now it's up to me to go back and save Charles Wallace. And I thought that was like a good part of the book that I was like, oh, I understand her more. Because, yeah, anybody would be mad in her place saying my dad did this and he left us and now he's leaving Charles Wallace again. What the hell? That's a good developing part of the character. And for it not to be in the movie, it's like, okay, and you included the beach scene instead, (laughs) you know? Hell yeah. (laughs) Uh, what else? Uh, other stuff that is in the, not in the book. I'm, it's you know some other characters. Um, Veronica, the girl in the gym, you know who gets the ball in her face. She's not in right. the book. Also, there's um, in the book when they're on Uriel and they're flying on top of Reese Witherspoon when uh, she transforms she to the into character. A giant leaf dragon. It well, she looks straight like a Pokemon, and I think somebody online so mentioned that, like, too. oh, that isn't that a Pokemon? So... <laughs> bad <laughs> uh when they're on her back in the book she gives them three flowers one to each kid and saying hold the flower tight going up into the atmosphere in between space and the atmosphere so there's no air they're supposed to use the flowers as a scuba tank kind of thing just put their face into the flower and they breathe that's not in the movie so i thought that was that would have been in the movie because i saw the flowers kind of like you know greet them and they talk to the flowers that's when they got introduced to the darkness to it that's not in the movie but they actually put that calvin falls to his almost his death and the flowers save him that's not in the book so they replaced one for the other and i'm like that's that was your choice but i would have liked it if you know you saw them go up see the big dark cloud and use the flowers to breathe and be like you know questioning what's that and that's when they talk about it that is dark and that is evil Instead of like, oh, look, Calvin just fell and we try to save him, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, also, what was missing, which I really liked in the book, was that Meg and Calvin, the relationship. Um, Meg is a young girl who's going to become an adult kind of thing. So if you think it that way, she's discovering what love is. She sees a boy and in school, nobody likes her and stuff like that. This kid is there and he's like, hey, I like you. And in the book, he's always saying, I like your hair. I like your eyes. They even talk about it before the witches come to take them away. She says, you know, something she takes off her glasses or he takes off her glasses and says, I like your eyes. They look pretty. And she's like, no one likes my eyes. And he's like, why are you wearing glasses? Like, oh, because I'm blind. And he's like, well, keep wearing them because I don't want nobody to see your eyes. Because if they do, they'll... (laughs) They'll fall in love with you, just like he did, kind of thing. So then she blushes, right, right. and I'm like, okay. In the book, it's subtle, like, oh, she's blushing because she she wants attention. She doesn't understand what she's feeling. Later on, just subtle things like they're holding hands while you know while she's afraid, and she feels safe when, when they're holding hands. I'm like, that's developing her relationship with Calvin at the same time as the you know discovering herself. And then right. there's a kiss almost at the end of the of the book when she goes off to fight it by herself because no one can go except her and i was like that's missing in the movie and i'm like opted that yeah disney might not want you know kids kissing in movies but at the same time it's like it's part of a kid's book you know it's like just put it in there you know it'll make it more interesting especially i'm sure there's kids who are teenagers who are going to go see this movie and they're going to be in the same spot they're getting bullied in school and they feel no one loves them and everything guess what this is kind of telling them There's somebody out there for everybody in the world. So I didn't see anything wrong with it being in the book, but I saw that not included in the movie. That was a big mistake. And let's give it our our rating. Man, uh, I want to give it like a two or a three, Sal. Okay, I, I, I went a little lenient on it, so I went a four and a half out of ten. Okay. Like, I appreciated what it was trying to do, although I just felt like everything just felt forced. Like, the magic felt forced, the, the ch- you know, the dramatic child acting felt forced, you know, all the emotional emotional pulling and strings and everything. That all felt forced. Everything about this movie just felt forced. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It didn't work out for me. I didn't like it. Two or, two or three out of ten. <laughs> no, for me, I, I think I just gave it a four and a half because I guess Meg, I really liked um, her hair. Her hair kind of made the movie for me. You know, the the time when Calvin's like, I like your hair. And she's like, no one likes my hair. Or like, you know, don't say that. Yeah. It reminds me of a, a classmate in school. You know, she had her hair like always frizzy and kind of like popping out. And kids would be like, I like your hair. And she's like, I hate my hair. You know, like, I don't like it. And I'm like, hey, you know what? It, it's 
it makes you stand out, you know? It's kind of cool, you know? You're not, you know, but with a bunch of other people who are have just straight hair, you're unique. And I think that's what uh, her character was. She was unique. She was, she had to stand out, but at the same time, she felt that she didn't. She had to... I don't know what it is about it, honestly. My sister was kind of the same way when we were growing up. Like, she would straighten her hair all the goddamn time for a while. It was annoying. <laughs> See, I don't like when people do that, like, because they, they want to fit in. But at the same time, I would understand that, like, if you stand out, you know, you'll stand out for the wrong reason. And then people are going to pick at you. And then you just want to basically have it stop. So I understand that. But at the same time... I thought that she did a good job saying, like, look, I'm, I'm unique, which means people are going to pick at me. But, yeah, that's why I gave it four and a half. I guess it was just that extra. <laughs> it was the hair that got the extra point for me. <laughs> so that's it for our review of A Wrinkle in Time. Uh, check it out, I guess, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> and catch us next time when we review Isle of Dogs, Wes Anderson's new movie. This one I'm pumped about, Sal. <laughs> I'm so hyped for it. And remember, social media is in the description, and hit us up if you have any questions. Remember, keep watching movies.